This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McKellar and today we are back with the Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art. It's been a bit of a week of highs and lows. I've had a few really cool parts turn up which I don't really need yet, but the ones I need haven't turned up yet and when they have turned up there's been issues. So if you tuned in last week you'll know that I need to replace the heater core behind the dash in this thing because I found out the heater hoses have been bypassed which means it's been leaking. It's because of these two plastic joiners which connect to this heater core and there's two little rubber o-rings one in each one which fail. So the first one here is fine, the second one not so fine. So when it turned up, it was in two pieces. There's a little shaft here that has snapped off and to me that's a bit of a worry because it was packed really well. This is a part which you're going to be putting in to one of the least accessible parts of your car and to get it out again is a dashboard out job. So what I did instead is I went onto eBay and I found a genuine pair of these little plastic connectors with the O-rings, genuine Mitsubishi. So to me, that is probably the best thing I could ever do from this point on. It is painful to sort of deal with stuff like this. So that's one huge job. The other one I've got on my list currently is the timing belt. I've got a few parts for that job, which I'm still waiting on, but also I've ordered a Gregory's workshop manual as well. So I can step through and do everything literally by the book instead of just winging it like I usually do because I've been able to get away with that on Falcons, but I don't think I'll get away with it on that particular job. So this week, I'm gonna continue on with some jobs that I can do, and that is ripping off the door cards, maybe applying a little bit of insulation to the inner side of the skin, and I've got some speakers to install as well. So we'll slam those in, and there are a few other little things which we can take care of as well. So we are slowly chugging along. Let's get into it. When it comes to speakers, I've been told there are none in here, so I'll get in there and have a look. But long-term viewers will know that I love a bit of KFC, and that's what we're going with today, specifically Kenwood KFC speakers. Now these are, I think, a really good compromise between sound quality and dirt cheap price. So if you're an audiophile, these are not gonna satisfy you. But if you just have a daily driver, which this one is going to be, this car is going to be quite loud when you're driving it. Sound quality is not something I'm really prioritizing. So long as you can have a semi-decent set of speakers, they're gonna do the job. So as far as I can make out, a set of six inch or six and a half inch, I can never remember, should fit in the front. And for the parcel shelf, the factory fitment are six by nine. So I've already investigated this. They do fit in properly. So I'll be able to finish that today. But yeah, let's get this skin off and see what's happening inside. I'm gonna cop criticism I know for doing audio upgrades and sort of cleaning first, but really it does come down to what parts I've got available to me. You wanna be able to do the job right and do it first time, so it does pay to wait. There we go, one more clip. So, it should just lift off hopefully. Awesome. It's actually pretty neat on the inside. There's a block of foam here just chilling out, but I'm guessing that's normal. And there's a spot for the speaker. So look, that's gonna be pretty straightforward install. I might actually rethink my installation of insulation. You know, this car I think is going to be all about performance and the sheer enjoyment of driving. And if you're sort of adding sound dender, well, the question there is why? It's weight. So, especially on doors, sound dender, anything that adds extra weight is putting extra stress on the hinges when the car is kind of going over bumps. If you, if you weigh the door down too much, it can start banging on the striker. I have had that before, so I'm probably gonna backtrack on that. One thing I like to do is just go over all of the screws because this car is 20 years old and anytime you take a, an interior trim apart like this, it does pay to just nip everything up a little bit. So these are just a little bit loose. If things are plastic, don't go too crazy with the sort of force you're applying, otherwise you can crack things. But metal on metal, have at it. See, even that little bracket there for where the handle goes is loose. You can actually see the bracket moving in a bit there as I tighten that up. So that's gonna do wonders for how tight this door feels and especially where the sound is. Any vibrations, you're probably gonna hear it in time with the bass on your, your tunes. So I can actually see quite a few different screw holes here. So it's obviously had a couple of different speakers in it over the years. Mm. 
right, we can't actually test these yet because I don't have a head unit, but it should be good to go. Look at the state of this door, we've already got some insulation sort of hacked on here. Right guys, so we've got our rear speakers installed. As I mentioned, we've got the interior refitted. It's looking pretty clean, but it does need a final going over. When we use the wet vac to sort of extract as much gunk out of these seats as possible, I think it was just continually pulling gunk out. So some of the blacks are not as black as they should, but I reckon if we get a really good fabric cleaner and just wipe these to finish them, they should look great. Still need to clean the doors and everything, but at least we have some speakers installed. Otherwise, yeah, we are going to be pulling the dash uh, hopefully next week. So that's going to give us an opportunity to clean and tighten everything up in there, make sure everything's all good. So as daunting as that is, I am kind of looking forward to it. Also wanted to show you guys something. I had quite a few of you in my comments section talking about checking the drain under the bottom of the windscreen here. So there's some plastic panels you can take off, but I'm happy to report, apart from being a little bit dirty, it's not too bad. There's still some leaves under there left wiper motor over there which I need to get out but overall looking pretty good no signs of rust there's a panel here which I've taken out too it's clean under there well you know cleanish there's no rust there's no corrosion which is cool so yeah aside from needing a good cleanup it looks pretty good now I just want to replace my gas struts preemptively before this thing kills me by body slamming me into the engine so let's do that now we do need to replace these little nubbins here uh, to one that is compatible with the new struts. So let's quickly do those now. Now I just need something to prop this bonnet up with. I couldn't think of anything better than this. Gotta tell you what, have a look at this. This one on its own is almost holding this bonnet up by itself. And when it gets near the top, it does actually go back up. So that is awesome. Let's get the other one swapped out. With both of these swapped out, this is actually holding still and when you do raise the bonnet up, it goes up by itself. So look, if you have a bonnet or a boot which is constantly trying to body slam you, replace your struts. They don't cost very much and it is a five minute job as you just saw to replace. So definitely do that. I will leave a link in the video description to those struts as well for a Magna bonnet. So under here, things look remarkably neat. And uh, because I don't have the carp on jack stands, I can't quite read what brand that muffler is, but we will see it uh, in the video. But yeah, the, uh, the cats there, everything looks pretty neat. Um, but yeah, as we follow this exhaust back, as it goes up over the rear sort of axle here, there's some heat wrap on there with a clamp and I'm not really sure why I'm guessing maybe there was a leak or something there. The material or the metal of the exhaust looks different from here back. Is there a join? See there's there's a joiner there. That bit which goes up over the axle or the rear frame here, whatever you call it, looks a bit odd. This muffler on the back here is not looking too healthy. I don't know what it looks like on the top. Once we get this thing roadworthy, I'll take it to an exhaust shop and I'll get them to redo it. And I actually have a new muffler, which I wanna replace this one with. So this is a Verex muffler. And for those who know them already, they have a motor in them. And why do they have that? 
Well, it can swap from being a proper muffler to being a straight through muffler. So if we have a look on the inside here, you'll be able to see there is a little butterfly valve and at the moment it is fully open. You can see the light shining all the way through it. Uh, there is basically, it looks like a throttle body. There's a little opening valve there in the middle. So I have actually already pre-wired this car for this system. There's a little control box which has to go in the interior. And you use the included remote control to trigger the little actuator in there. So if you see that, and uh, you can basically have a few steps in between closed and open, or you just hold it and it'll go all the way closed, all the way open. So where does the exhaust go when it's closed? Well, you actually see on the left there, there is a little opening. So the exhaust basically goes in there and routes through the muffler itself, and then there'll be another opening on the other side of the throttle blade or whatever you call that thing, the little actuator blade there. So you end up with a straight through muffler that's not really muffling your exhaust note very much at all, if anything. But when you close it, the gas ends up getting rerouted through the sort of housing itself. So it goes in sort of here, goes wherever, and then comes back out. So I actually had this system installed on my old R34 Skyline and it performed amazingly. The majority of the time you leave it open, but if you ever want to just cruise on the highway or, you know, don't upset your neighbors when you leave and come home, you can shut it on the click of a button. So yeah, we won't get that installed today. I need the help of an exhaust shop to do that because I don't have a welder, but this should be a really cool upgrade for this car. Now I'll have to leave it there for today, guys. I know I'm a little bit short on content in this video because I'm really just waiting on parts. What I'm probably gonna do in the meantime before you see the next video, I'm sort of gonna start taking this apart. It's not gonna be a step-by-step -step guide, so I'm gonna to have to try and do it myself methodically just with the cameras off. So when you see this car next time, hopefully it will look a little bit different. Same goes for the headliner. I will rip that out as well. So the next time you see this, it's probably gonna be missing one. But you know, this car to me is not too daunting. Aside from getting the heater core done and doing the timing belt, I don't think there's really a lot else wrong with it for a 20 year old car. It's gonna be hopefully roadworthy. We'll have to get under check the brake pads. Um, the discs look okay, a little bit of surface rust on them, obviously. So touch wood, hopefully it won't need much else for a safety certificate and registration so we can start driving this thing. Because I want to be able to enjoy it for a while and then I will need to find someone who can paint it for me as well. So on paper, it does seem like a big job, but not really. I think it's just an expensive job and mainly from the paint perspective. But yeah, I've got a few surprises in store for you guys with this car. I do have some really cool parts in the boot, which I haven't shown you yet. Some of them are new old stock OEM parts, especially for the interior here, and they're gonna look pretty amazing. So stay tuned, thank you very much for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section below. I have copped a lot of hate from all the Ford and Holden fans for this car, but stick with me, I tell you. It is a pretty interesting vehicle. Even though it is front wheel drive, front wheel drive still go pretty well. You can't drift in them and do any of that fancy stuff, but they are pretty amazing cars. And you know me, I love Australian built cars. This is Australian made. Even though Mitsubishi does not sound Australian, this car is Australian. So stick with me. Thanks again. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.